What is up everybody, how's it going? Justin here back again to bring you all another top 10 and in today's top 10 we will be talking about 10 heroic sacrifices within the world of Warcraft. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Number 10, Gnar. Gnar is the older brother of the Frostwolf Chieftain Durotan and is the uncle of the former Horde Warchief Thrall. Prior to the launch of Warlords of Draenor, we didn't really have any information about Gnar, but the few appearances that he makes in the expansion, although they are short, are pretty impactful. We see that Gnar is pretty much the polar opposite of Durotan, whereas Durotan possesses similar traits like Thrall, as in they are both calm, patient, and cautious, Gnar is hard-headed and more often than not, resorts to violence even if it comes off as a careless course of action. An example of this is when Gnar leaves Durotan's forces open to an attack because he led his Frostwolves on a mission of executing the sons of the Iron Wolf. They get into a heated argument and Gnar challenges his own brother to a Mak Gora. Durotan, however, convinces Gnar to abandon his path of vengeance, for the strength of a Frostwolf does not come from giving into hatred and vengeance to those that they have lost, but by standing and fighting alongside the family that still remain. Those last words are echoed through Gnar's final actions within Frostfire, where Gnar once desired to duel Durotan for the title of Chieftain, he now ends up giving his own life not only for his clan and his brother, but for his family. Number 9. Lady Sylvanas Windrunner Sylvanas was once a ranger general, tasked with overseeing the primary defense against all those who would pose a threat to Silvermoon. When the undead scourge led by Arthas Menethil marched upon the elven doorstep, Sylvanas and her ranger corps quickly armed themselves and took action against the undead armada. Even in the face of unmatched might, superior numbers, and tireless warriors, Sylvanas and her loyal rangers constantly bombarded him with hit-and-run tactics, desperately trying to whittle down his endless legions and defend their beloved city. Even in the end, as death creeped ever closer, Sylvanas gathered her forces and attempted to warn Silvermoon, but every single runner she dispatched was hunted down and murdered before they could even get through the undead ranks. Despite this, however, Sylvanas continued the feudal resistance, refusing to make Arthas' job an easy one. But eventually, she was overpowered. For her heroic acts in defending her beloved city, even in the face of inevitable defeat, she demanded from the Death Knight a clean death, to which Arthas refused to give her. For all of the trouble that she had put him through, for all of the obstacles that he had to overcome because of her, Arthas desecrated her spirit and transformed her into a banshee, damned to walk the world of the living in undeath. For fighting as a warrior to her very last breath, her sacrifice did not stop the undead invasion, it did not stop the Sunwell from exploding, and it did not grant her a clean death. For fighting as a warrior, it granted her an endless eternity of suffering and torment. Number 8. Alexandros Mograin Alexandros is the father to both Renault and Darien, and was the original wielder of the legendary weapon known as the Ashbringer. In the Second War, Mograin noticed an orcish warlock channeling his dark magic through a shadowy orb. Upon trying to recover it, the orb mangled and mutilated Alexandros' hand, dealing the noble warrior a grievous blow. When his allies saw the crystal, they channeled a holy spell upon the malevolent artifact attempting to destroy it, but instead of destroying it, it transformed the crystal into a manifestation of pure light that healed and restored life to Alexandros' hand. It was then decided that from this crystal, a weapon of unparalleled power would be born, a weapon that would battle the undead. With the help of King Magni Bronzebeard, the weapon was forged and the Knights of the Silver Hand rallied to continue the war against the infinite undead. However, the blade caught the attention of both Kel'Thuzad and the Dreadlord Balnazar who had taken control of the Grand Crusader of the Scarlet Crusade, Dathrohan. Balnazar, under the appearance of Dathrohan, then convinced Renault to lure Alexandros, his own father, as well as High Inquisitor Fairbanks, into an ambush. As the undead legion swarmed the two men, Fairbanks was ultimately swarmed and overpowered, while Mograine managed to destroy every single undead minion that dared to attack him. In fatigue and exhaustion, Alexandros dropped his blade which allowed Renault to come up from behind him and run the Ashbringer through his own father's heart, killing Alexandros and corrupting the legendary blade. Kel'Thuzad then used his necromantic powers to resurrect the High Lord and have him serve the Scourge in Naxxramas as one of the four horsemen. Number 7. Alternate Timeline Velen. 
In Shadowmoon Valley, Velen and the players see a vision of the future where the Temple of Katabor, Velen, Uriel, many of the Draenei, as well as the player, are overwhelmed, destroyed, and even killed by the Iron Horde and a Dark Star named Kata. Because of this, Velen decides to issue an early strike against Nerzul and the Iron Horde to stop them from summoning the Dark Star so that this future reality could be avoided. However, despite their preemptive strike, Nerzul refused the pleas of Velen to abandon his path of madness, and the Warchief of the Shadow Moon completes the summoning ritual, giving birth to the Dark Star and the vision that was foreseen earlier. At this point, even though all seemed lost and the Iron Horde continued to make their advance, Velen, without hesitation, selflessly sacrifices himself so that Kata would once again become an entity of righteous light and purity, giving hope and strength to both the Draenei and Alliance forces and ultimately allowing the Temple of Karabor to avoid destruction. No words are said within the cinematic, but it's one of the strongest, if not the strongest and most impactful cinematics of the entire expansion. Number 6. Anduin Lothar Anduin Lothar, otherwise known as the Lion of Azeroth, was the supreme commander of the armies of the Alliance of Lordaeron in the Second War. After the death of Medivh, the assassination of King Lane, and the sacking of Stormwind, Lothar managed to play a role in uniting the human kingdoms together under the banner of the Alliance when he urged his fellow comrades within the courtroom of King Terranus Menethil to join arms together in order to combat the rising tide of the Orcish Horde. Because of his incredible skill in warfare and unparalleled first-hand experience with the Orcs, Lothar was named the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, with a courageous paladin named Turalyon as his second in command. During the assault on Blackrock Spire, which proved costly for the Orcs, Lothar was unfortunately killed in an ambush when a group of Horde warriors attacked him as he and his comrades attempted to parley with the Orcs. However, the lore since then has been revised, stating that Lothar has not been killed in a cowardly ambush, but was instead bested in single combat by Orgrim Doomhammer. In the midst of a bloodthirsty battle, Turalyon saw his commander engaging the Warchief of the Horde in single combat. But before he could make his way to Lothar, Doomhammer gained the upper hand and brought down his mace upon Sir Lothar's helm, crushing his skull. Victorious and expecting the Alliance to retreat upon seeing the death of their beloved leader, Orgrim and the other orcs stood with confidence as they patiently awaited the tide of the battle to change in their favor. What followed, however, was the complete opposite. Turalyon, overcome with sadness and grief at the death of his commander, grabbed hold of Lothar's shattered sword and shield and cried the words, For Sir Lothar! This piercing and bellowing cry rallied the Alliance soldiers into a frenzied state and they managed to push back the Horde soldiers back through the dark portal from which they came. Regardless of how the Lion fell, through ambush or through single combat, his sacrifice allowed the Alliance to ensure their victory at the dark portal. Number 5. Agrimar Agrimar was a member of the Titanic Pantheon whose might could only be matched and surpassed by Sargeras himself. He was the lieutenant of Sargeras and the two saw each other as close friends as they journeyed throughout the cosmos, liberating countless civilizations and planets from the devastation of the demons. In time, however, Sargeras would lose faith in the Pantheon's mission of bringing order and stability to newly discovered worlds and instead would come to the realization that the only way to spare the universe from corruption was to purge it in fire. And so with this thought in his mind, the once valiant titan freed the demons that he had spent ages imprisoning and took the mantle as the leader of the Burning Legion. Upon discovering what happened to his friend, Agrimar retreated back to the Pantheon and informed them all of Sargeras' madness. Together, as one, the Pantheon then confronted Sargeras in an effort to reason with the once noble champion. But the fallen titan refused to listen or heed their warnings for fear of the Void Lord's corruption across the cosmos had utterly consumed him. As a last resort to avoiding conflict, Agrimar laid down his weapon and walked towards Sargeras. Agrimar recounted glorious stories of their battles against the demons, battles that they were only able to overcome together. The Titan reminded Sargeras that they had taken oaths and vows to protect all of creation, not to destroy it. 
He pleaded with Sargeras to abandon his path of vengeance and rejoin his brothers and sisters within the Pantheon, but Sargeras did not listen. The fallen titan looked upon Agrimar, and with a howl of rage, sorrow, and anger that echoed across the stars, Sargeras struck down his closest friend with his fell blade, cleaving the titan in two. Too far gone was Sargeras, that not even the kind words of his most trusted friend could bring him back from his madness. Number 4. Bolvar Fordragon High Lord Bolvar Fordragon was a highly respected paladin that spearheaded the Northrend counteroffensive assault on Angrathar the Wrathgate alongside a young and honorable orc warrior named Dranosh Sourfang. Amidst the fighting, however, the forces of the Lich King, Horde, and the Alliance were massacred and forced to flee the battlefield after Grand Apothecary Putris barrages the combat zone with a blight that causes even the Lich King himself to retreat behind the Wrathgate. As the War of the Frozen Waste continues and the fall of the Lich King draws nearer, the champions of the Horde and the Alliance manage to gain entry into the Lich King's stronghold of Ice Crown Citadel. It is there that we discover that Bolvar Fordragon is trying desperately to resist the corruption of the Lich King, even after being held captive ever since the events of the Wrathgate. The Northrend counteroffensive eventually is able to defeat the Lich King atop the Frozen Throne, and as Tyrion is about to accept the mantle of the Lich King, Bolvar stops him and tells him to place the helmet on his head instead. This brutal war against the Scourge not only ravaged his alliance forces at Angrathar, brutally mutilated his body within the Wrathgate, led to him being captured and tortured endlessly by the Lich King until we rescued him, but also caused him to become the new Lich King so that he may keep a constant vigil over the damned for all eternity. Number 3. Tyr Tyr is a titanic keeper created by the Pantheon to battle back the Black Empire and the Elemental Lords ages ago in the era of Primordial Azeroth. After he and his fellow Titanforge were able to overcome and defeat the malicious beings, Tyr and his comrades settled into an age of peace and unity among the Keepers. Unfortunately, however, this time of tranquility did not last. Loken had been deceived and manipulated by yogg saron to the point of where he believed that he needed to overpower and defeat his brother and sister Keepers so that they would not discover his treacherous acts. However, Tyr and his allies Arcadis and Arania had stolen the Dis of Norganon from Loken which caused him to panic since he knew that if they presented the information from within those Dis to the Pantheon or to Algalon then he would have a death sentence. So Loken called upon Yogg-Saron's mightiest servants, the Cathraxi generals Zakaj and Kithix, who hunted down Tyr and his allies. Tyr ordered his fellow Titanforge to flee while he alone would stand his ground and attempt to best the Cathraxi generals. Unlike Loken, Tyr's noble heart had not flagged. He would not retreat, and he would not yield while the lives of his companions were still at risk. In a clash between order and chaos, Tyr and the two pawns of the Old One battled for six days and nights, neither of them giving ground. But as the battle raged on, Tyr began to feel fatigue settling in. Realizing that he would not be able to stand his ground against his foes much longer, Tyr unleashed every single bit of his remaining power upon the Cathraxi generals, resulting in a blinding and catastrophic explosion that killed both Tyr and Zakaj while gravely wounding Cathix to the point of where it had to flee blindly into the west. As Tyr's companions returned to the side of the battle, Irania, in honor of Tyr's sacrifice, named the lands which surrounded the area Tyrsfall, otherwise known as the Tyrsfall Glades, and placed Tyr's silver hand atop the burial site. Number 2. Broxigar Broxigar, a war-hardened orc of the First, Second, and Third War, was sent back in time to the events of the War of the Ancients 10,000 years ago. Initially, he was captured by the Night Elves, mocked and treated like an animal, but while in captivity, he was met with a kind priestess named Tyrande who gave him food and mended his injuries. He called her a shaman because of her restoration powers, and the two became well acquainted despite the rest of the Night Elven society treating him like a savage. He was eventually freed by Tyrande and given a mystical axe of wood that would bring death to thousands of demons that would dare engage him in combat. Despite initially being poorly treated and mocked by the Night Elven people upon capture, Brox was now seen and even revered as a formidable ally even in the eyes of the most xenophobic of Night Elves. At the final battle over the Well of Eternity, Brox came to the realization that if the future, his future, would ever be saved, then his companions would need more time. Time which they did not have. And so Brox leapt from the back of a red dragon into a dark and consuming portal that transported him into the realm of the Legion. Once there, 
Broxigar continued to halt his foe's advances, slaughtering legions of demons, giving the Kaldrai resistance the time they needed to overcome their foes. His axe was an extension of the orc itself, the weapon and the orc who wielded it working in unison as thousands of demons were carved up and killed upon engaging the war-hardened orc in combat. In time, Broxigar had slain so many of his foes that a hill of demonic bodies had been littered under his feet. Brox even called out for more to come taste the edge of his axe, mocking his so-called terrifying enemies until the dark titan Sargeras answered the orc's summonings himself. The Lord of the Legion came personally to put an end to Broxigar's life, but before he would be struck down, Broxigar managed to strike a small wound upon the titan's leg, making him the only known mortal to have ever personally wound Sargeras. Unfortunately, however, there was so much even the mighty Broxigar could do against the Lord of the Legion himself. In the end, Broxigar lost his life not by the hands of any mere pawn of the Burning Legion, but it took the might of their leader, the Dark Titan Sargeras himself, to end the orc's legacy. Broxigar's sacrifice was not forgotten. Although his story is nearly unheard of in the history of the orcs, the Night Elves raised the statue in reverence to his memory and his sacrifice. A sacrifice that stopped Sargeras from achieving victory during the events of the War of the Ancients. Number 1. Darien Mograin Darien, the High Lord of the Knights of the Ebon Blade, is the son to Alexandros Mograin and the second wielder of the Ashbringer. When his brother betrayed their father by murdering him, Darien led a small group of Argent Dawn members into infiltrating Naxxramas in hopes of freeing his father's tortured spirit as well as reclaiming the Ashbringer. The mission ultimately turned out to be successful, but at a high cost. Darien was the only one who managed to make it out alive from the Scourge Necropolis and was forced to leave his father's body behind within the Scourge Citadel. However, he did manage to reclaim the Ashbringer, which unknowingly to him, also contained the spirit of his father. When Darien returned to the Scarlet Monastery and confronted Renault, who Darien at the time was unaware of his brother's betrayal, the spirit of his father came forth from the blade and beheaded Renault for his treacherous acts. A ghostly spirit of High Inquisitor Fairbanks then came to Darien and told him to seek out Tyrion Fordring, to which Darien did. Darien informed the paladin of the fate which befell his father, to which Tyrion responded by saying, that only an act of love greater than an act of evil could free his father's soul from eternal torment. With these words embedded in his mind, Darien then ventured to Light's Hope Chapel where a Scourge army was currently assaulting the soldiers of the Argent Dawn. For what seemed like an endless eternity, the forces of the Light battled back the undead legions until the tide began to turn against the Argent Dawn. But just at that moment, where it seemed that all may be lost, Tyrion Fordring joined the battle and the tide of the war once again shifted in favor of the soldiers of the light. But just as it seemed that they might prevail, the right hand of the Lich King, Kel'Thuzad himself, joined the fray and rallied the forces of the undead armadas under his command. Upon seeing the Lich enter the battlefield, Darien took hold of the Ashbringer and carved the path through the endless waves of the dead, making his way to Kel'Thuzad. But the undead Lich did not falter. He showed no fear and stated to Darien that not even the mighty Ashbringer was powerful enough to stop him and his undead onslaught. At this moment, Darien recalled the words that Tyrion had stated to him earlier. Only an act of love, greater than an act of evil, would not only bring salvation to his father, but the forces of the light as well. With these words as his last righteous thought, Darien grabbed hold of the Ashbringer and plunged it through his own heart, whispering the words, I love you, father. And with this final act, the hills surrounding the chapel were purged of all undead remnants, pillars of light cleansing the adjacent lands of any scourge corruption. All that remained was Kel'Thuzad and the undead figure of Darien. As the undead would be known, Lord of the Ebonhold looked upon the Lich. Kel'Thuzad asked him, Who now do you love? To which the Death Knight responded, No one. For you, I would give my life a thousand times.